welcome to this video. And in this video, I'll look at the Sylvester's criterion for determining whether a function is positive definite. Sylvester's criterion, of course, for positive definite function. Sylvester's criterion for positive definite function. A function v of x is said to be positive definite if and only if a function v of x is said to be positive definite if and only if, if v of x is greater than zero for all values of x not equal to zero, if v of x is greater than zero for all values of x equals to zero and v of x is equals to zero for x equals to zero. If these properties are met, then such a function is said to be positive definite. For example, a function v of x, which is equals to x1 squared, plus x2 squared for all values of x positive or negative, but not equal to zero, we notice that v of x will be positive. For all values of x, one and x2, positive or negative, the value of v of x will be positive. That means greater than zero. But when x1 and x2 are equal to zero, it is the only instant of time where v of x will be equal to zero. And this is an example of a positive definite function. When we look at it in terms of a function v of x, which is greater than zero for all values of x not equal to zero, and v of x equals to zero for value of x equals to zero. When we have a complicated function v of x, it becomes difficult by inspection to tell or to determine whether the function is positive definite. And the Sylvester's criterion come in handy in determining whether a function is positive definite or not. We look at the quadratic form of a function quadratic form of a function. So the quadratic form of a function v of x can be written as x transposed p x. The quadratic form of a function v of x can be written as x transposed p x, where p is a real symmetric matrix. P is real symmetric matrix. For example, if P is a two by two, we can have P11, P12, P21, and P22. So P is real symmetric. At that point, then we mean P12 will be equal to P21. Sylvester's criterion states that the necessary and sufficient condition that the quadratic form of the function v of x is positive definite is that all the successive principal minors of p be positive. For the function v of x in quadratic form to be positive definite, all the successive principal minors of p must be positive. That is to mean all the determinants obtained from the square matrices of P must be positive for V of X to be a positive definite function or positive definite function. That is to mean if we are to take a three by three matrix, P11, P12, P13, then this will be P12, P22 and P21. 
two, three. Then this will be P1, three, P2, three, and P3, three. This is our matrix P, which is a three by three. All the principal minus of P must be positive. That is to mean P11 should be greater than zero. P11, P12, P12, and P22 determinant should be greater than zero. And of course, the determinant of P, which is a three by three, should be greater than zero. If all the determinants of the resulting square matrices out of the matrix P are greater than zero or are positive, then by Sylvester's criterion, then the quadratic form of the function V of X is positive definite. Let's put this in form of an example. For example, we are to use Sylvester's criterion to determine whether the function below is positive definite. Our function V of X is defined as V of X is 10 X one squared plus four X two squared plus X three squared plus two X one X three X two, two X one X two two minus two x two x three minus four x one x three so we are to determine whether this function is positive definite and by inspection we cannot be able to tell whether it's positive definite easily since we've got to consider all the possible values of x one x two and x three in this context if we write the function v of x in quadratic form, then our v of x can be written as x1, x2, x3, that is x transpose, multiplied by our matrix P. We take a real symmetric matrix P, which is a three by three, as P11, P12, P13, P12, P22, and P23. P13, P23, and P33. We multiply this by X1, X2, X3. This is the quadratic form of our function V of X. If we expand this, we'll get V of X. If we expand this, we'll get V of X to be equal to P11, X1 squared plus P22 x2 squared plus p33 x3 squared plus 2 p12 x1 x2 plus 2 p13 x2 x3 plus Sorry, this is supposed to be P12, X1, X2, P13, X1, X3, X1, X3, plus 2, P23, X2, X3. You can confirm that the expansion of V of X in matrix form will end up in this solution. And if you compare our function V of X, and its quadratic form with the matrix P defined by the real symmetric matrix P in this equation. We notice that our P11 will be equal to 10, the coefficient of X squared. Then our P22 will be equal to four, P22. Our P33 is equals to one, the coefficient of X3 squared. Then P12 is the coefficient of X1, X2 from which P12 will be equal to one. P13 is the coefficient of, P13 is the coefficient of X1, X3, which is negative two. And P23, which is the coefficient of X2, X3 will be equal to, sorry, this is negative one. Huh? 
and this will be so this is negative two and this will be negative one so we'll compare 2p13 to be equal to negative four that means p13 is negative two and therefore our matrix p can be written as our matrix p is the matrix p11 which is 10 p12 negative two then we have one four negative one negative two negative one one that is our matrix p from which we notice that our p11 is equals to 10 of course this is greater than zero our p11 p12 p12 p22 determinant is the determinant of 10 1 1 and 4 determinant which is equals to that 9 and again this is greater than 0 our determinant of p is going to be 10 into so we get this as 4 minus 1 which is 3 minus 1 into so we close out that to get 1 minus 2 which is negative 1 and then minus 2 into minus 1 plus 8 and when we evaluate this we'll notice that this is going to be 30 plus 2 and then minus 14 this is going to be 32 minus 14 which is 18 and this is greater than zero. We notice that all the determinants of the submatrices out of the matrix P are positive. And the Sylvester's criterion states that if all of them are positive, then the function V of X is positive. And therefore our function V of X is positive definite. And that is the Sylvester's criterion for determining whether a function is positive definite, especially when the function is written in quadratic form. Otherwise, that is the end of my presentation. And in my next video, I look at the Lyapunov stability criterion, which uses the Sylvester's criterion for positive definiteness of a given function v of x.